ladies and gentlemen, we shall now have a short session dedicated to the Sustainia Award. In a few seconds, we shall have on the podium uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger, uh, Connie Hedegaard, who is the EU Commissioner for Climate, and Terry Taminen, who is the Special Strategic Advisor to Arnold Schwarzenegger for the R20. Thank you very much. These are all on. They are terrific. Yes, they are. All right. Well, what a great crowd. And uh, I think there's a lot to say. I I'm Terry Tammon, and thank you so much for that warm welcome. I know it was all for me. Um, I want to get right into this because Commissioner Hedegaard is on a bit of a tight schedule, but it's very important, actually, for this group to create a transition because uh, what we just heard was a very uh, uh, focused statement of the problem and of what we're going to have to adapt to. And we're going to hear from Governor Schwarzenegger later about some of the solutions and the mitigation that we can take that might be a more hopeful picture. But in between, we have Commissioner Hedegaard, who deals with this every single day, who is trying to find ways to find the nexus between adaptation and mitigation and hope and despair and, uh, and policy solutions and technical solutions. But one of the other things that she's a great visionary on, like the governor, is getting the public engaged in actually making this a movement that gets everyone engaged in solutions. And that's part of what she wants to talk about tonight, and Governor Schwarzenegger does as well before we get into the second half of the program. So, Commissioner Hedegaard, with that, may I turn it over to you? Thank you very much. And uh, congratulations to Sustainia. We're also here in order to celebrate a new initiative. And of course, as Commissioner for Climate Action, I think that it's great when somebody takes the initiative to try to communicate what kind of solutions there are out there. I mean, four or five years ago when I came to the United States, I thought when I saw this cover page of Time magazine with some polar bears and some melting ice sheets, I thought, well, now awareness is coming because people can, through that kind of pictures, they can get awareness, something is happening. But I would say that was more like uh, climate one zero. Now we need to come to climate two zero. And we need to move from awareness. I know there are a few pockets in the world where awareness is not good enough yet. But basically we have to move from awareness now to action. And that is sort of also what we try to do in the European Union, to try to find out both, both on adaptation and mitigation. What can we actually do? And there, of course, melting poles will not be enough to make people change the way they live their life or make some other choices in their daily lives. Then you have to sort of show to them that you can have an intelligent life, a smart life, a fun life, a creative life, if you apply some more sustainable solutions. I used to be a journalist, and in journalism we have this saying, don't tell it, show it. And I think that that is what we have come to now, show it. I do not know if I have time just to mention one example in Europe. Some of you have heard that we have an economic crisis in Europe. <laughs> and that's taken quite uh, a lot of our, our time. But we are also starting very much to discuss how do we exit that crisis? What kind of growth do we need in order to exit the crisis? One example, last year, 2011 in Europe, we imported oil, not gas, not everything else, just oil for 315 billion euros. Now you would say that sounds like a lot of money, but how much money is it? Well, it's almost the size of the Greek debt. Then you will know it's a lot of money. So 315 billion euros spent. We have a, a deficit, trade deficit in Europe of 150 billion euros. So how wise is it to continue to pour money into Middle East regime, into different other systems, so that they can sort of have the growth that they need, instead of us investing a bit more in a more energy efficient and resource efficient society? And if we did so, retrofitting buildings, retrofitting pipes, things like that, 
we could create jobs. Jobs that we need right now in Europe, jobs that cannot be outsourced to China or elsewhere. So that's the way we try to discuss climate to zero now in Europe. Climate change is also about energy and resource efficiency. It's more about more intelligent solutions, and it's about how we create the growth of the future. So that is how I would very much like to, to welcome this initiative, show the solutions. It's not about a gray and black future on the country. It's colorful, it's interesting, it's intelligent. Whereas if we continue business as usual, then we are in for something very gray and very black. Thank you very much. I, I think the uh, European Union needs a climate action commissioner who's more passionate and animated, don't you? I mean, <laughs> that was fantastic. Governor, uh, you know, the Sustainia Awards is really a fascinating concept uh, and the entire initiative because it does shine the spotlight on good solutions and on innovation and uh, just like the Oscars or bodybuilding trophies that you may have won in the past, it inspires people to take more action. Do you think that can work? Is that transferable when, when you go from, say, the movies or bodybuilding or those types of examples when you come to something like climate change? Can awards and ways for people to envision a future really make change? Well, as I said earlier, I think that that award is a great idea. And I think it's always good when you hand out awards and when you, uh, you know, reward people for great work that is done. And, uh, but it's one out of many things that need to be done. As you know, I'm a big fanatic about communication. Uh, because I think that, uh, and I think that Connie hit the nail on the head, that we got to really communicate to the people and, uh, you know, really reach out and bring them into the movement because obviously government alone cannot do it. If it is local government, even though the R20 that we have started, it's uh, all about subnational governments, but they alone cannot do it. The, the federal governments cannot do it. The UN uh, alone cannot do it. I think everyone has to work together in this movement. And we have to communicate and let the people know, not only kind of talk about guilt, and uh, talk to them about, you know, this is terrible to sit, to sit in a jacuzzi because, you know, there's greenhouse gas emissions, or it's terrible to drive with this truck because there's greenhouse gas emissions, so it's terrible for you to fly with the plane because there's greenhouse gas emissions, but to talk about the good things that are going on. Like, for instance, there is the Geneva car show that is here right now. Well, the people don't have an idea that, for instance, there's a whole pavilion out there of green cars. So we, the R20, are going to organize an event, a press event, tomorrow morning at 9 o'clock, at 9 a.m., to go and put the spotlight on green cars so the people all over Switzerland and all over Europe get to see that there's 50-plus cars out there that are green, that are getting 65 miles per gallon. And that is extraordinary performance. And so we see the car manufacturers now slowly kicking into gear and start producing alternative fueled cars, which is so important. But you see, they can have their pavilion out there from here to eternity. But if you don't communicate that, and if you don't put the spotlight on it, you have nothing. And so my point always is, and I come from the marketing background, and I've gone through, you know, putting the spotlight on things. If it is, you know, fitness and going through the, the whole fitness crusade and uh, promoting my movies and everything. If, if you don't communicate right, you have absolutely nothing. No one will buy your product. You can have the best product in the world, but no one will buy it because no one will know about it. So those are the kind of things I think that's very important to do. And that's what we, the R20, are all about is to go and see those holes that we have in this whole environmental movement and try to fill those holes and be more inclusive. And as I always say, to make the whole movement more sexy and more attractive, more hip, so that everyone becomes part of it. And not to make people believe that government will take care of you and government will take care of the solutions, but it is you. Each and every one of you has to ask yourself all, all the time that question, what do I do personally? And this is why it's also important for us to communicate what you can do, in fact, personally on a, on a daily level. That's a great message. That, that's worth a round of applause, absolutely.